ಜಯ ಶ್ರೀಲ ಪ್ರಭು ಜಯ ಜಯ ಪ್ರಭು 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 ಶ್ರೀಲ ಪ್ರಭು ಜಯ ಜಯ ಪ್ರಭು 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 ಶ್ರೀಲ ಪ್ರಭು ನೀತಾಯ ಗೌರ ಹರಿ ಬೋಲ್ ಹರಿ ಬೋಲ್ ಹರಿ ಬೋಲ್ ನೀತಾಯ ಗೌರ ಹರಿ ಬೋಲ್ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರು ಚರಣ ಪದ್ಮ ಕೇವಲ ಭಕ್ತಿ ಸದ್ಮ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರು ಚರಣ ಪದ್ಮ ಕೇವಲ ಬಕಾತಿ ಸದ್ಮ ಬಂದು ಮೂಯಿ ಸಾವಧಾನ ಮಾತೆ ಬಂದು ಮೂಯಿ ಸಾವಧಾನ ಮಾತೆ ಜಾಹರ ಪ್ರಸಾದ ಬಾಯ ಏ ಬಾಬಾ ತೋರಿಯಾ ಜೃಷ್ಣ ಪ್ರಾಪ್ತಿ ಹೋಯ ಜಾಹ ಹೋಯ್ತೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಪ್ರಾಪ್ತಿ ಹೋಯ ಜಾಹೋಯ್ತೆ ಗುರು ಮುಖ ಪದ್ಮ ವಾಕ್ಯ ಚಿತ್ತೆ ಕೊರಿಯಾಕ್ಯ ಗುರು ಮುಖ ಪದ್ಮ ವಾಕ್ಯ ಚಿತ್ತೆ ಕೊರಿಯಾಕ್ಯ ಅರ್ ನಾ ಕೊರಿ ಹೋ ಮನೆ ಆಶಾ ಅರ್ ನಾ ಕೊರಿ ಹೋ ಮನೆ ಆಶಾ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರು ಚರಣೆ ರತಿ ಏಸೆ ಉತ್ತಮ ಗತಿ ಜೆ ಪ್ರಸಾದ ಪೂರೆ ಸರ್ವ ಆಶಾ
सच प्रसाद पूरे सर्व आशा चक्षुदान दिलो जय जन्मे जन्मे प्रभु से चक्षु दान दिलो जय जन्मे जन्मे प्रभु से दिव्य ज्ञान हृदय प्रकाशित दिव्य ज्ञान हृदय प्रकाशित प्रेमा भक्ति जहा होते अविद्या विनाशा जाते प्रेमा भक्ति जहा होते अविद्या विनाशा जाते वेद गाय जहार चरित वेद गाय जहार चरित श्री गुरु करुणा सिंधु आदमा जनार बंधु श्री गुरु करुणा सिंधु आदम जनार बंधु लोकनाथ लोके राजीवाना लोके नाथ लोके राजीवाना हा हा प्रभु करो दया देहो मोरे पद छाया हा प्रभु करो दया देहो मोरे पद छाया प्रभु पा करो दया देहो मोरे पद छाया ए बेजा शक दु शुक त्रिभुवाना ए बेजा गो शक त्रिभुवाना जय प्रभु पद प्रभु पद प्रभु पद श्रील प्रभु पद जय प्रभु पद प्रभु पद प्रभु पद श्रील प्रभु पद जय जय प्रभु पाद प्रभु पाद प्रभु पाद जय प्रभु पाद जय जय प्रभु पाद प्रभु पाद प्रभु पाद जय प्रभु पाद जय जय प्रभु पाद प्रभु पाद प्रभु पाद श्रील प्रभु पाद नीताय गौर हरि बोल हरि बोल हरि बोल गौर हरि बोल श्री गुरु पूजा की नमः ओम विष्णु पदाय कृष्ण पृष्ठाय भूतले श्रीमत भक्ति वेदांत स्वामी मिति नामिने नमस्ते सरस्वती देव गौरवाणी प्रचारिने निर्विशेष शून्यवादी 
पाश्चात्य देश तारिने जय श्री कृष्णा चैतन्य प्रभु नित्यानंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर श्रीवासादी गौर भक्त वृंदा जय श्री कृष्णा चैतन्य प्रभु नित्यानंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर श्रीवासादी गौर भक्त वृंद हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे Yashodananda Praja Janaranjana Yamuna Tira Vanachari Yamuna Tira Vanachari Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare.
Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Nittai Gaur Hari Bo, Hari Bo, Hari Bo, Hari Bo. Jai Jai Prabhupada, 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 Jai Jai Prabhupada. Gaur Premanande Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prestaya Bhutale Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swamin Iti Namane Namaste Sarasati Devi Gauravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Sunyavadi Paschacha Deshatarine Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Narayanam Namaskrityam Naram Chaiva Narotamam Devim Sarasatim Vyasam Tato Jayam Udirayat Nasta Praeshu Vabhadreshu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavati Uttama Shloke Bhakti Bhavati Naishtaki Hare Krishna So today we're reading Srimad Bhagavatam uh, first, first, first canto Chapter number nine, Passing Away of Bhishma Dev, text number sixteen. Nayashya Karichidrajan Nayashya Karichidrajan. Puman Veda Vihitsitam Puman Veda Vidhitsitam Yad Vijitya Yukta Yad Vijitya Yukta Muyanti Kavayopihi Muyanti Kavayopihi 
Nayasya Karichedrajan Puman Veda Vidhitsitam Yadvijanasaya Yukta Muyanti Kavayopihi Nayasya Karichedrajan Puman Veda Viditsitam Yadvijit Ganasaya Yukta Muyanti Kavayopihi Anybody else like to chant? Nah, -uh. never. He certainly Ashya his karichet whatsoever Rajan O King Puman anyone Veda knows Viditsitam plan yet which vijjanasaya with exhaustive inquiries yukta being engaged muyanti bewildered kavaya great philosophers api even he certainly translation o king no one can know the plan of the lord shri krishna even though great philosophers inquire exhaustively they are bewildered you please repeat O king, o king, no one can know, no one can know the, plan the plan of the Lord, Shri Krishna, Shri Krishna. Even, though even though great philosophers inquire, great philosophers inquire exhaustively, exhaustively. They, are they are bewildered. The best policy is 
simply to abide by the orders of the Lord without argument. The sufferings of the Pandavas were never due to their past deeds. The Lord had to execute the plan of establishing the kingdom of virtue and therefore his own devotees suffered temporarily in order to establish the context of virtue. Vishmadeva was certainly satisfied by seeing the triumph of virtue and he was glad to see King Yudhishthir on the throne. Although he himself fought against him, even a great fighter like Vishmadeva could not heal the pattern of Kurukshetra because the Lord wanted to show that vice cannot conquer virtue, regardless of who tries to execute it. Vishmadeva was a great devotee of the Lord. But she chose to fight against the Pandavas by the will of the Lord. Because the Lord wanted to show that a fighter like Vishnadev cannot hit on the wrong side. Thank you, Prabhu. Om Magyana Timarandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chaksurun Militanyena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prestaya Bhutale Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swaminiti Namine Namaste Sarasati Deve Khoravani Precharine Nirvishesha Shunyavari Paschatya Deshatarine Vanchakaupatarubhyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhayevacha Patita Nam Pavane Bhyo Vaishnavi Bhyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasade Gaur Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. How many of you are staying here at night? Most of you, huh? Good. So nice to see your energetic kirtan. You, you use up a lot of energy. I hope they give you enough prasadam <laughs> to make up for it to replace all the energy you use in dancing. So Prabhupada always encouraged devote, young, new devotees, young devotees, eat more. <laughs> eat up to the neck, you know. <laughs> eat lots of prasadam. So I hope you get enough to eat up to the neck. Okay, we're reading about Grandfather Bhishma Dev departing. And he is taking time to console Maharaj Yudhisthira because Maharaj Yudhisthira is feeling himself responsible for the death of so many people. It wasn't just one or two, it was many, many, maybe how many crores? 60 crores, really. <laughs> Okay, and so many people died, right? We cannot conceive. And Lord Bhishma Dev is there and he's speaking in the presence of Lord Sri Krishna as well as Maharaj Yudhisthira and his other Pandava brothers and so many other souls. They had all gathered to witness the departure of Grandfather Bhishma. When you go to Kurikshitra, you can see that place, right? How many of you have been to Kurukshetra? Not many, eh? Hmm. <laughs> okay, that's a place for you to go to in the future. Go and see Kurukshetra. Dharmakshetri, Kurukshetri. Kurukshetra is famous for two things. One is for speaking Bhagavad Gita and the other is for Rathiatra. The first Rathiatra took place at Kurukshetra. So we're, this has become the expansion. Our Rathiatra is the expansion of the original Rathiatra, which took place from Kurukshetra. When the 
the gopis wanted to bring Krishna back to Vrindavan. And this is our Vrindavan, right? This is our Gundicha. Gundicha means the, the heart. Our heart is, the home is in the heart. Home is always in the heart. Our heart is always in the home, <laughs> right? We should be at home. We like to be at home. So, Gundicha, Vrindavan, that is our real home. That's where we all belong with Krishna. And this Rathiyatra is to bring us more into that consciousness of Krishna, to qualify us that we can enter into that Vrindavan mood. So Grandfather Bhishma is explaining to all the great personalities who have come to witness his departure and particularly to Maharaj Yudhisthira that everything which happened was the plan of the Lord. It was all the arrangement of the Supreme Lord. He planned everything. And the purpose of his planning was described by Srila Prabhupada in the purport that the Lord wanted to establish a kingdom which would be ruled by virtuous people. He wanted that Maharaj Yudhisthira, who is the son of religion personified, that he should lead, he should be ruling the kingdom. He did not want that Dhritarashtra's sons should be running the place. Not that they were totally corrupted, but they were not devoted. They were, you could, Prabhupada in the purport, he talks about virtue and vice. So vice means corrupt, vice means not good, bad things, evil things. So. We don't want that kind of government, that kind of state. We want a virtuous kingdom. And in order to have a virtuous kingdom, the leader must be virtuous. And Lord Krishna therefore wanted the Pandavas headed by Maharaj Yudhisthira that they should rule, that they should actually take the charge of the kingdom. Everything is the plan of Lord the Supreme Lord. Now, Prabhupada explains how for some time, although the Pandavas were his devotees, they had to accept difficulties. They went through a number of difficulties for a number of years. But the purpose was ultimately that they should be established in, as the rulers. We have to understand the Lord had a plan and nobody else can actually understand the plan of the Lord. We try to understand, but the dealings of the Lord are inconceivable to our limited senses. We are limited. The Lord is unlimited. We make plans. Maya will destroy them. Right? We are planning for our own sense gratification, how we will live in this world. But often whatever plans we make, they fall apart. They fail to be realized. But the plans of Lord Sri Krishna never fail. They always materialize. And it happened also in the case of the Pandavas that they took the role of the kingdom. Now, the interesting point was that Grandfather Bhishma was on the other side. Although he is described as one of the Mahajans, there are 12 Mahajans mentioned in Srimad Bhagavatam. Mahajans meaning the authorities in the path of devotional service. So the Mahajans are named Swayambu Naradashambu Komar Kapilomanu Pralado Janako Bhishmo Balir Vayasaki Vayam. And that Vayam, that is 
Yamaraj. Lord Yamaraj is also one of the Mahajans. So Grandfather Bhishma's name is there. Sometimes people are surprised. Why is Bhishma's name there? He fought against Krishna. What did he do? You know, he even stood and witnessed Draupadi. They attempted to disrobe Draupadi. He didn't say anything. Even one of the Kauravas, one of the brothers of Duryodhan, Vikarn, he objected. And he told them, this is wrong. You shouldn't do this. This is not right. This is not dharmic. And that was why in the Bhagavad Gita, you can see in the beginning of the Bhagavad Gita, where Duryodhana is speaking, he wants to encourage the people on his side. And he mentions, we have great fighters like Bhishma and Drona and Karna. And then at the end, he put, he said, and Vikarn. But actually Vikarn, he wasn't a Maharati. All the others named were Maharatis like Bhishma and Drona and Karna, they were all Maharati. Vikarn wasn't a Maharati. Why did Drona, why did Duryodhana mention his name? He wants to encourage him because he's worried that he might defect to the other side. That was always the, the danger, you know, you want to keep everybody on your side. You don't want to lose anyone. So Duryodhana encourages him by mentioning his names, great fighters, you know, and he includes also Vikarn, although he's not actually such a great fighter, but he just wants to encourage him. Hmm? Oh, very good. And then if you get a little encouragement, then you'll never leave the side, right? And once the battle begins, then you, you, you're too late. You can't leave the side. That was the deal. That was the agreement. That once the battle begins, then there's no defecting to the other side. You know, sometimes you may say, oh, our side's getting beat. I think I'll go to the other side. We see also in the Battle of Lanka, there was a brother of Ravan, right? What was his name? Vibhishan, right? So he came over to join the army of Lord Ramachandra. And they were looking at Vibhisha and they're thinking, do we want him on our side? He's from Ravan. He's one of Ravan's men. Why do we want him on his side? But Lord Ramachandra explained that anybody who takes my name even one time, I can never give them up. So Lord Ramachandra welcomed Vibhisha into his army. And later on also we see that Vibhisha was made the king. He became the ruler of Lanka. And he was also told to go to Puri and regularly worship Lord Jagannath. It's actually said that Vibhishan had gone there one time and he'd left a ring there. One, there's this, this huge big ring there. They said it was the ring of Vibhishan. So you're on the wrong side. Bhishma's on the wrong side. But what can he do about it? He accepts it. Okay, you know. I'm on this side, I have to do my duty, I have to fight. Bhishma and Drona, they both had to take part on, on the side of Duryodhana. Although they were actually partial more to the Pandavas. But they were obligated because they had accepted financial assistance from Duryodhana. They'd been living there in the palace at Hastinapur. They'd been eating their food. They'd been living in their palace, accepting their facilities. So when the battle of Kurukshetra came about, they're obliged to fight against the Pandavas. But in their heart, they're actually devoted. They're actually inclined towards Lord Krishna and they're inclined towards Dharma. What did Bhishma actually do to become a Mahajan? He actually revealed himself at the time of his passing away. It was just at the end of his life that he revealed his actual nature. Because in, as he was leaving the world, when the Pandavas all came there, it was Grandfather Bhishma who pacified them 
he spoke to Yudhisthira and he instructed him in the principles, in the codes of religion, how they should practice actual religion. So it was Grandfather Bhishma who gave that instruction and it was also Grandfather Bhishma who had just as he, as he was leaving the world, he, he was focused on Lord Krishna and he was glorifying Lord Krishna. And we will hear later on in this chapter how Bhishma glorifies Lord Krishna and he even talks about the gopis and he, he glorifies the, he actually understood how Krishna was the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So he is one of the great devotees and he is accepted as one of the authorities. So Grandfather Bhishma though was on the wrong side. So we may think, oh, how could he be a devotee? The point is, you cannot judge someone just by their external features. Just like we see people in saffron dress, it doesn't mean they're more elevated than somebody who's in white. Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur never took sannyas. He never renounced. He was always dressed in white cloth. But he was the most elevated, advanced devotee. And you have Lord Nityananda. Lord Nityananda also was, he, he has two wives. It appears like, is he a Grihastha? Actually, he is Avadut. He's beyond all the ashrams. He is the Balar, non different from Lord Balaram. And as Lord Balaram is non different from Krishna, Lord, Balara, Lord Nityananda is non different from Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So Lord Nityananda is a great Paramahamsa, great devotee. And he's, but he's playing the part like an ordinary person. Pundarik Vijaniri, another person. He appeared to be like a materialist, but actually he's a great devotee. When he, when he heard uh, Makunda sing a verse from Srimad Bhagavatam, glorifying the mercy of Lord Krishna, the bhava within him awakened and he revealed his transcendental love for Krishna by exhibiting the greatest ecstasy. Srila Prabhupada came to the UK in the 1970s. In the 1970s, there was a lot of interest in spiritual teachers. It was even the time, the time magazine had decided one year to be the year of the guru. And they talked about different gurus. And, and so when Prabhupada came to London, he was staying in our little center in London and many reporters came to meet him and they could see Prabhupada living in our very humble little center in London and he, they also saw the devotees what the activities we were doing that every day we would be out on the streets singing and dancing and distributing a little magazine to collect a few coins as a donation so people, the, these reporters who had come there, they actually had some appreciation for our Krishna consciousness movement, that this was a genuine religious process. And they were worried about some other different so-called spiritual teachers, because there was a lot of news, particularly about one person who had run out of India and gone to the West and he was living in great opulence, surrounded by many women and he had a big fleet of very expensive motor cars. So they were asking Prabhupada, you know, how do we, rec you know, 
Do you want to comment about these teachers, these so-called teachers? Do you want to say anything about them? Do you think they're genuine or not? Look at their opulence. So Prabhupada explained to these reporters that you cannot judge who is a genuine teacher just by the opulence. That's not how you judge. And Prabhupada explained, the person who's riding a bicycle, he may be a cheater. And the one who's riding in the big car, very expensive car, he may be genuine. He may be a real teacher. You cannot judge a person just by the external features. We cannot judge someone's spiritual advancement simply by the color of their dress or simply because they've shaved their head and put on the marks of a devotee. Just as battle of Kurukshetra, Bhishma and Drona are fighting against the Pandavas. Does it mean Bhishma's a demon? He's a great devotee. He's not a demon. We have to be very careful how we judge people, how we look at people. Don't just look at the external features. Prabhupada explained the important thing is what do they say? How do they speak? Right? In the Bhagavad Gita, you can see Arjuna's question to Lord Krishna. Stita pragnasya ka basha samadhi stasya kevshava. Stita kim prabhaseta kim asita prajeta kim. Arjuna is asking this question to Krishna. What is the nature of one who has achieved transcendence? How does he speak? And what is his language? How does he sit? And how does he walk? <laughs> it's an a very important question. And Lord Krishna gives a very good answer. He explains very clearly that one who has actually achieved transcendence, then he has controlled his mind and senses and he is fixed on the transcendental platform. He has conquered over material desire. This is actually the symptom of a person who is in transcendence. So, how does he speak and what is his language? Does, it, does he speak Bengali or does he speak Hindi? That's not the question, right? What is his la Is it English? That's not the question. How does he speak and what is his language? And does he speak with passion? Does he speak arrogantly? Does he speak with pride? And, or does he speak with humility? Does he express the truth? Is he speaking the truth? Or is he just speaking some nonsense thing from his own mind. Is he speaking according to scripture? Srila Prabhupada traveled the world to preach Krishna consciousness. So in the course of his traveling, he would often have to go into the most horrible places which we call airports. Airports are hell. And there's a lot of very nasty people there in these airports. So Srila Prabhupada was traveling in the airports and he would see these different people traveling with him on the flights in the airplanes and he would see them often with their business suits. They're dressed very well, business suits and they have their briefcase and so on. And they look very mm, well situated materially, but Prabhupada would hear what they would talk. He could hear their language. What are they talking about? 
and Prabhupada could understand their nature. That they were simply materialistic people. They were simply vishayis, simply servants of their mind and senses. They were simply interested in sense gratification. And of course, during the flight, Prabhupada would see how they would want to have drinks, alcohol, and they would eat all kinds of disgusting foodstuffs. So Prabhupada understood, although they may appear to be very well educated, very well situated materially, they are actually mudhas and naradamas. They are fallen souls. They have not taken the real advantage of human life. Human life is meant for inquiry, investigation, thoughtfulness. Human life is not meant for just working hard to eat and sleep and mate and defend. Grandfather Bhishma understood the importance of religious principles, dharma, following dharma, doing his duty, fighting with detachment. We see a nice example of this in Srimad Bhagavatam. It comes in the sixth canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, the pastime of Vritasura. Now Vritasura, in his previous life, he was Chitra Ketu. But he had, the, he had been cursed by the wife of Lord Shiva. Mother Parvati cursed Chitra Ketu. Chitra Ketu had come there to Kailash and he happened to see Lord Shiva embracing his wife and at the same time sitting in front of an assembly of great sages. So it bewildered Chitra Ketu. He was surprised to see this and he laughed about this. So Mother Parvati did not take nicely to his, his uh, laughing or his, like a little bit of ridicule of Lord Shiva. And she cursed him that you don't know how to behave, I curse you, become a sudra. So Chitra Ketu ex took, he fell at the feet of Mother Parvati and he thanked her. He said, thank you, Mother. Hmm? You can understand how he was actually an advanced devotee. Somebody curses you, you curse me, I'll curse you. Right? We say tit for tat. No. But Chitra Ketu, he, all right, you curse me, thank you. Very, and he accepted the curse. And he became Vrita Sura. Vrita meaning spread everywhere. He had a huge body. And he was born from a fire. And the purpose of his birth was, well, the person who was doing the yagya, he did a yagya to produce, he wanted to produce, to produce someone who could kill Indra. But instead of producing someone who could kill Indra, he simply produced someone who was the enemy of Indra because he got his mantras wrong. <laughs> right? It wasn't even Kali Yuga, but even before Kali Yuga came, people had difficulty to chant mantras. So, Twasta took birth, uh, rather, Vritasura took birth, and he is born in the demon family. The demigods and the demons are always at war with each other. There's always conflicts between the demigods and the demons. So Vritasura has to lead the demons in battle against the demigods. Now, the demigods, we will think, they're the, the devotees. They're the symbol of goodness. And the demons, they must be the mode of passion and ignorance. Right? From Bhagavad Gita, we have two natures. The divine nature 
and the demoniac nature. Daivi Sampat, Asuric Sampat. Right? Chapter 16, Divine and Demoniac Nature. Chapter 15, the three modes of nature. Right? Chapter 15 is describing the mode of goodness and then the mode of passion and ignorance. So you have the divine nature, which is the mode of goodness. And you have the demoniac nature, which is the mode of passion and ignorance. Now, here you have Vritasura. Vritasura was Chitraketu in his previous birth. So he had a lot of devotion. He had a lot of the mode of goodness. He was a very great devo advanced devotee. But he's got the demon body. He's cursed to take the demon body. Now when you get cursed into the demon body, you never lose your devotion. We always tell devotees, whatever advancement you make, you'll never lose it. Right? Nahi, what's that verse? A little advancement made on that path. In this endeavor, there's no loss and diminution. And a little advancement made saves us from the greatest danger. Sneha Vikram. Okay, I'll, so there's no diminution. Whatever advancement, all the activities you've been doing here this week in the service of Krishna, it's to your eternal benefit. You'll never lose the benefit. Whatever advancement you've made, you'll never lose that. And even Vritasura, he didn't lose his bhakti. He took his bhakti with him to the next life. So he's in the body of Vritasura, but he's a devotee. But he's in the demon body. He has to fight the demigods. And Indra's fighting. The demigods see Vritasura, who run, save yourself. They all run away. The demigods were supposed to be in the mode of goodness. They took one look at Vridasura. He was so huge. He was so terrifying. The demigods just ran for their life. And Indra was just tight. Don't run. What is this? They were supposed to be in the mode of goodness, you see. <laughs> but they didn't show the mode of goodness. They didn't always. Demigods don't always display the mode of goodness. So Vridasura is in this demon body and he's fighting Indra. And he's encouraging Indra. And Lord Indra understands this person, this demon Vritasura, is a great devotee. And Indra's thinking, how can I kill him? How can I fight him? He's a great devotee. But Vridasura is urging him. Come on, kill me, come on, you've got that weapon. The Lord had told Indra, you get that uh, brajra, that thunderbolt weapon from the bones of the Dichi. Indra had made this thunderbolt weapon and the Lord had told him, you can use this to kill the demon, Vritasura. But Indra's thinking, he's a devotee, how can I kill him? But Vridasura is telling him, come on, use your weapon, use it. So Indra cut off one arm. Vridasura still has one arm. He came at him with a mace and he hit uh, Airavrata, Indra's elephant, and he knocked him back 14 yards. Indra fell off and Airavrata got Indra injured. But Vridasura is still encouraging Indra, come on, kill me. Because Vridasura, he knows that when he gets killed, then he will get liberated. He's going to go back to Godhead. He understood that the goal of life was not to win the battle. The goal of life was to get free of birth and death. And he could get free of birth and death when Indra kills him. So he wants Indra to use his weapon. And what happened? Indra then cut off his other arm. So he had no more arms. 
So Vrida Sura then assumed a huge form and then he swallowed Indra and Indra entered into the mouth of Vrida Sura but Indra had been chanting the Narayana Kavacha. So because he'd been chanting the Narayana Kavacha, no harm could come to him. Even though he was inside the stomach of Vridasura, he remained alive. So Vridasura saw, they swallowed Indra, so then he sat down in trance and he went into Samadhi. <coughs> when he was in Samadhi, Indra used his thunderbolt weapon to cut his way out of the intestines. Because although Indra had been swallowed, he had his thunderbolt weapon with him. And he used that to cut his way out from the intestines of Vritasura. And he came out. And then he cut off the head of Vritasura. It took one year to cut off his head. <laughs> uh, this is Srimad Bhagavatam. It's telling us how Vridasura, although he was in the body of a demon, he was a great devotee. And Vridasura was preaching to Indra. He was telling Indra, victory in defeat is not in our hands. It's all the arrangement of the Lord. He is the controller. Everything is moving under his direction. Purusha and Prakriti are all under his control. We are not the doer. It's all going on under his arrangement. We know from the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna similarly told Arjuna, Nimita Matra Bhava Savyasachin. Just become an instrument in my service. So this is our position. This is the position of devotees. Simply be an instrument in the service of Lord Krishna. Victory or defeat is not in our hands. Don't be attached to the result. Just like, just like we put on this Rathiantra festival and you want to distribute books, don't be attached. Just do your duty. We approach people and ask them, would you like a book? They, oh, no, 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 I've got some. Oh, okay, thank you. You know, we did our duty. Our duty is to give them the chance. We put on these programs, we give everyone a chance to hear about Krishna, to become a devotee. Who will become the devotees? That's up to Krishna. Krishna chooses who will be his devotees. It's all done by Krishna. It's, he makes the plans. We are simply the instruments in his service. Hare Krishna. Okay, any question? Hare Krishna Maharaj. It was really a delight to hear from you. Maharaj, in the beginning, you said everything is uh, Krishna's plan, just in case of Bhishma and second example you gave, Vritrasa. Maharaj, how can we neophyte devotees know what is Lord's plan for us? Because sometimes we give our efforts and uh, don't get the result. We may think it is Krishna's plan. Or the expectation could be we give more efforts or we do it other way around, not that way and the results might come. So how do we know what is Krishna's plan? Where do we draw the line? Well, we have instructions from our spiritual, spiritual authority, Sadhu, Shastra and Guru. So we act according to Sadhu, Shastra and Guru. They direct us, they give us different duties. We have to act in dharmic ways, according to the codes of religion, we have to perform our activities. Some people have duties, for example, to worship the deity. Someone else is a cook. Someone else is a manager. 
we all have different responsibilities. So we do whatever is expected of us. And at the same time, we want to be detached from the result. At this, but at the same time, we do want to endeavor. It's not that we don't make an endeavor. We should want to endeavor for the service of Krishna. But at the same time, the result will be given by Krishna himself. Sometimes we may be successful, sometimes not. But there's no failure. There's no question of failure in executing our duty. Lord Nityananda went with Haridas Thakur to preach to Jagai and Madai. And on the first attempt, they were not successful. But there was no failure. The fact that they made the attempt was glorious. Prabhupada never considered that somebody had failed. The devotees went to Japan. Now, this was uh, very 1970, very early. Devotees were going to Japan. Devotees were uh, book distributors. Japan at that time was economically prosperous and the devotees would go to Japan to do book distribution and the money would come to Vrindavan to build the Vrindavan temple and some also went to Mumbai, the Juhu temple. Prabhupada needed money to build these temples. We didn't have all the support which we have today. We didn't have the congregation. How did we get money to purchase, to do anything? Book distribution. And where to get the money? You wouldn't get money on book distribution in India, not in the 1970s. We would sell Gita Gan one rupee. So you're not going to make much money. I mean, we do book distribution, but it's not going to build temples. So devotees were going to Japan and giving the money to Prabhupada. But at one point, sometimes, sometimes devotees who were there, they would get arrested because not every country allows you to do these things, to come there and distribute books. So one devotee had got arrested, he got deported, came in the newspaper. Hare Krishna deported from Japan. So some of Prabhupada's godbrothers, they said to Prabhupada, said, look at this, see this. Bad publicity. Hare Krishna deported from Japan. Prabhupada looked at them, he said, at least we went there. You didn't even go there. So Prabhupada did not think failure. He said, we tried, we went there to preach. Did you go there? You didn't even go. Sometimes people would come. Sometimes the, some Prabhupada's godbrothers even, sometimes they would criticize. Prabhupada would say to them, How many miles have you traveled? How many books have you printed? How many people have you initiated? None of them could answer. Because none of them had done anything compared to what Prabhupada had done. So they were trying to criticize, they were trying to find fault. But Prabhupada did not consider failure. You make the attempt to preach Krishna consciousness, you act according to Dharma. That is the main thing. You may say, oh, then you got, but you, if you are acting according to Dharma, you got arrested, you get deported, is that Dharma? We are not under the laws of karma, uh, kamsa rather, kamsa, you know the kamsa governments, yes they will arrest you, they will deport you. Kamsa governments, they are not going to support Krishna consciousness. Prabhupada went to Russia, it was still communist. Prabhupada went to Russia and he made the first devotee there. He set the the ground for the preaching there. So we have to be willing to do sometimes these things, to take some risks, to do things, even though people may not so much appreciate. But we're not concerned in just the sentiments of 
common people. Our duty is to serve Krishna and to please Krishna. What does Krishna want? Try to please Guru and Krishna. We don't want to care about the sentiments of ordinary people. Oh, this is not good. Oh, this is not right. Why like that? No, no, don't do like, just like Prabhupada brought deities. People say, oh, you, should, you have to have Ganga Jao. <laughs> Prabhupada said, Ganga Jao? This America, where are you going to get Ganga Jao in America? Does it mean we don't bring the deity? No, you can make the Ganges appear by mantra, right? Ganga Chao, Yamuna, Chaiva. <laughs> They're all there now, all the holy rivers, call them by mantra. So we have to be bold to preach Krishna consciousness. You cannot just, just like when, when Prabhupada came before Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati at Utadanga. Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati is saying, why don't you preach the message of Lord Chaitanya? And our, our Srila Prabhupada said, Oh, our India is not independent yet. First we have to get independence for India. And Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati said, No, no, not like that. Krishna consciousness is so important. It cannot wait for some political adjustment. It cannot wait for some political adjustment. Don't wait. You cannot just sit back, oh well, your time is not right, in the future, well, oh, just wait till the country opens up a little bit. No, we have to be very eager and see the urgency to distribute the message of Krishna everywhere without consideration. Right? Panchatattva distributed love of God. They did not consider who was qualified and who was not. Young men, old men, women and children, they distributed Krishna Prem to everyone without consideration. Hare Krishna. Okay, no other questions? Yes, you have a question? Whatever the thing we do, we cannot destroy. So we have two grades of people in the brain now. Those who are devotees and those who are not devotees, they are just common people. So in devotees also there are various grades of devotees. So how it acts is that we our act or our words, if some common people get hurt or some various grades of devotees get affected. So is it destroying bhakti or it covers because we have had a happy matter of Yes, right, yes, it's uh, Offense against the devotee will be more serious than the offense against the common people. But generally, devotee is respectful to all living entities. We don't know who's going to be devotee. That's the point. You may say common people. They may not be devotees now, but in the future they may become devotees. So we, we're respectful to everyone. We offer respects to everyone. I was with Srila Prabhupada one time in London. We went to this Hindu temple. They were worshipping Brahma, Vishnu and Shiva. And Srila Prabhupada told there, he said, a devotee of Krishna not only offers respects to Brahma, Vishnu and Shiva, they will offer respect even to the tiny insect because they see Krishna in the heart of all living entities. So we have to see Krishna within everyone and that we deal carefully with everyone. Yes, so devotee wants to deal nicely. We don't want to commit offenses. How do we, uh, how can we Atone, if somehow by chance we have committed offenses, we can make up for this by offering our respectful obeisances and begging forgiveness 
and by also serving the, the by giving service to people offering service that is how we atone by Krishna consciousness the more we practice Krishna consciousness then we can atone for our different sins from the past how do we offend people we may criticize someone on the basis of their birth we may criticize someone on the basis of their caste we may criticize someone on the basis of previously performed activities that, that they did something in the past maybe before they before they became devotees they had done sinful activities and we may so it is offensive to criticize people on that kind of basis. We should not criticize people, rather we should see the good, particularly in all devotees, because they're serving Krishna. All right, there was one other question. At the Maharaj, I have two questions. One, uh, we see the case of Bhishma. Um, as you mentioned that he was a Mahajana and uh, that got revealed toward the end of his life. But till that time, he remained uh, in the... the people thought something else about him. Bhishma is a typical example of someone being misunderstood mm -hmm. and gets revealed uh, the, real identity, the real identity toward the end of his life. In our devotional service also, we are sometimes, we often have the fear of being misunderstood. We have expectation that people should, that people should understand me. At least, at least the devotees should understand me. And this kind of uh, expectation sometimes becomes uh, so much uh, difficult uh, for one to move ahead. So, uh, so my question is, Maharaj, uh, how can we transcend this kind of expectation and we are just uh, oblivious, whether it's good or not, first of all, to have expectation that people should always understand me. And even if they do, and even if they do misunderstand me, how can we still go on? Well, we have to consider first of all what, 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 what are you are doing. That what you're doing sh must be authorized. That's an, an important point. That you're not just doing something simply according to your own speculation. But what you're actually doing is under the authority of your senior leaders, your spiritual teacher, and so on. And then, if people misunderstand, then we, we should not be disturbed by it. We should simply tolerate. Just like I was telling you about Srila Prabhupada. Now some of people, some of the people, some even the God brothers were not understanding Prabhupada's mood and his mission in distributing Krishna consciousness. But it didn't bother Prabhupada. He didn't worry about it. He continued because he knew what he was doing was right, because it was authorized, because it was the will of the, the scripture. It was authorized by sadhu, shastra and guru. So Prabhupada continued with the mission. So in the same way, if you're doing something which is authorized, you don't need to worry about it. If people misunderstand it, you continue to do it. The end will justify the means. We have to see the result. You know, you're doing something. I don't know, you didn't tell us what you're doing, which is so difficult for people to understand. But hopefully there'll be some good result from it. And in the end, people will appreciate and they will understand what you were doing. So you have to have faith that you're performing that proper, what you're doing is correct and authorized. And don't be so much worried about what other people think, so long as you've 
guided by Sadhu, Shastra, and Guru. Understand? Yeah? Thank you, Maharaj. The second question I had on Maharaj, you find the Krishna's activities are sometimes bewildering, even to, even to the red stages. His actions are quite inconceivable. As the verse of translation we read out, that his plans are inconceivable even for red souls. So sometimes we see that Krishna even makes uh, his devotee activity also inconceivable or somewhat bewildering to the, to the, to the conditioned souls. So why does Krishna uh, makes even devotee uh, activity bewildering to conditioned souls as you find in the, in the Bhishma or we have the example of Bamsi Dasaraji Maharaj. Sometimes we find it great so acting uh, just to bewilder. So why do so why does Krishna makes um, common people bewilder through their action? If the if the principle is Mahadana Yinagatasa Pantha, that we have to follow the action of the of great souls. So if great souls sometimes bewilder us through their action, what is the hope for us? I thought the last part I didn't catch what you said there. Yeah. Well, that's why I say we have to be guided by Sadhu, Shastra and Guru. Not that we just decide to follow a Mahajan, right? You could follow Sukadeva Goswami. Okay, Sukadeva Goswami is one of the Mahajans. So I'll follow Sukadeva Goswami. Sukadeva Goswami went naked. I will also go naked. That will be a problem, right? We're not on the level of Sukadeva Goswami. How are you going to follow Sukadeva Goswami? Follow the Mahajans. Yes, follow according to our qualification. To Prabhupada has taught us how we can follow. Follow in the footsteps of Lord Nityananda. Take up the Sankirtan movement. Chant the holy name and distribute the books about Krishna. That is, that is the perfect preaching program. Follow that example. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu sent Haridas and Nityananda door to door to distribute the message of Krishna. We can also go like that, door to door, and beg people to chant the name of Krishna. Not that we have to follow Grandfather Bhishma, you know, and wait till the end of life and then lay down on a bed of arrows, you know. How much, what can we do? to follow these great souls. How much can we follow a great soul like Janak Maharaj? Janak Maharaj, he was very charitable. And so, do you have a lot of charity to give like Maharaj Janak? Are you wealthy? Can you give a lot of charity? Well, what we can do, we can give the holy name. That is charity. You distribute the holy name the Sankirtan movement. And if we look at the, the program which Srila Prabhupada has given us in our ISKCON society, then it's perfect for following the path of the Mahajans. All of our activities, they follow in the footsteps of the Mahajans. We just simply have to engage in the regular program which we have in our Krishna consciousness movement. If the Mahajans were to come down today, they would be in ISKCON. They would be with us, doing Sankirtan. They would be here at this Rathiyatra program. Okay.
गंगा वर्ष की जगन्नाथ की पूरी और इंटर के बाद सेम रिजल्ट मंदिर गोपाल दर्शन और जगन्नाथ की पूरी और गंदी के दर्शन के चाय विपुल डीटी का जो जगन्नाथ की डिफरेंट टेंपल्स तो ये तो सेम रिजल्ट यस सेम रिजल्ट यस इट इज सेम The Jagannath and Jagannath Puri, Jagannath here, is there any difference? No, they're the same. Lord Jagannath, the same program, the same result. You worship Lord Jagannath here, you get the same result. No difference. Don't doubt that there's any difference. The Lord is everywhere. So He's also here in this Jagannath deity. Is there? And you can see he's making nice arrangements. How every year the Jagannath festival is so popular. So many people come. So many people get prasadam and they hear the holy name. They have association. You can see the potency of Lord Jagannath goes on every year, growing bigger and bigger. Right. We're only 50 years. The Jagannath Puri temple, how long have they been doing Rathiyatra? 3,000 years or something? And so, well, we're also growing. They're growing, we're also growing. No difference, it's the same Jagannath. Okay, Hare Krishna, thank you very much. Srila Prabhupada ki jai. Srimad Bhagavatam ki. Gaur Premanande. Well, it was. It used to be 12.45. I don't know what. What, what time? Is there a different schedule today? What time is my class? Hare Krishna, uh, right now, after the start, there will be class.